Channel Frederator. It's me, and I love you guys. I watch you every single day of, of every single second and minute. Last year, Inside Out conquered the world with all of the feels. So how could only 107 piddly little facts ever be enough for such an amazing movie? Uh, of course it's not. Can't get enough random trivia about joy, sadness, and the rest of the gang? Well, we've got you covered. I'm Maggie at Frederator, and we dug deep this time to uncover even more need-to-know info for die-hard Inside Out fans. So get ready, because Cartoon Hangover is counting down the 107 more facts you need to know about Inside out. So let's get started. Number one, Pete Doctor, co-writer and co-director of Inside Out, has always been interested in psychology and philosophy. He even attended the University of Minnesota for a year and studied philosophy. Number two, the film's crew got information from the Mind Brain Behavior Institute to help inform the decisions they made when telling the story and showcasing areas of the brain. Number three, Doctor said the majority of the first three years of production was about taking the enormous complexity out of the human mind and reducing it down to to something that you can understand in 85 minutes. Number four, the emotions chosen to be characters are based on Dr. Robert Flutchik's theory of emotions, which features four sets of polar emotions on a wheel, joy versus sadness, trust versus disgust, fear versus anger, and surprise versus anticipation. But if you ask me, he missed uh, chocolate versus vanilla, which is what I think about all day. Number five, with Flutchik's theory of emotions in mind, the film consulted psychologist Dr. Paul Ekman, who identifies humans as having six emotions, although the scientific number of emotions that humans have varies depending on who you ask. Number six, Dr. Ekman co-authored the book Emotional Awareness along with the Dalai Lama, who is not a real llama, which I found out more recently than I would like to admit. Number seven, Doctor was familiar with Dr. Ekman because during production on the original Toy Story, he had referenced his work on basic facial expressions. Now the two doctors are working together. You get it, guys? You get, okay, but do you get it? Okay. Number eight. While the character designs of the emotions were meant to convey their, well, the emotion, artists also kept in mind the wide range of feelings the characters would convey. For example, they had to think about how sadness will look when she was glad, while still being sadness. You can see how confusing that would be already. Number nine. All the characters are mostly one color except for Joy. She was given blue hair and a green dress because Dr. Feel that she would look too similar like Tinkerbell. Which, oh my gosh, now that you think about it, she looks a lot like Tinkerbell. Number ten. When designing disgust, there was much debate on if she should be grotesque to look at or just have an easily disgusted personality. The latter one. She's wearing that pretty dress, guys, remember? Number 11. According to Doctor, disgust is the one who looks out most for Riley's social status at school and spends the most time making Riley look good. Which begs the question, uh, is my disgust on vacation? I look like I'm wearing pajamas all the time. Number 12. Did you notice that the teeth on sadness are different lengths? Well, that was in intentional as the designers were trying to make the characters look more interesting by including asymmetry. Number 13. Art director Albert Lozano originally sketched sadness in pajamas because he felt that you stay in your pajamas all day when you're sad. Eventually this was changed to a big comfy sweater. Quote unquote, one you want to hide in, a safety blanket in a way. Which yeah, I mean I wear pajamas all day, that doesn't mean that I am sad at all. Number 14. Originally, Joy was supposed to be the only character with effervescent skin because it was too expensive to add the rest of the emotions. However, when executive producer John Lasseter saw it, he said that it was great and should be put on the other characters too. Ralph Eggleston, Inside Out's production designer, said that you could basically hear the core technical staff hitting the ground and the budget going through the roof. Number 15. The idea behind giving the cast this unique texture was that they didn't want the characters to look like people with skin but rather balls of energy. Number 16, actor Don Knotts and his wide eyes acted as the inspiration for fear. The outfit fear wears is also a nod to Knotts, which if you've ever seen him in the movie Ghost and Mr. Chicken, you'll realize is a perfect comparison. Number 17, the original plan for Riley's mind was for it to be more like a city, more populated in the center while the vast wilderness of the subconscious would surround the outskirts. Number 18, when developing the world of Riley's mind, doctors specified that the film take place 
place in the mind, not the brain, because the mind is a metaphor. Number 19. The containers for the memories were originally in jars, but Eccleston said it felt too real world. He also favored the idea of the memories being treated like almost reminiscent of a real dense spider web. Which why would anyone want to remember that? That sounds horrible. Number 20. Another idea that was scrapped was the concept of an idea field, where ideas would be cultivated to sprout and grow. The idea of a checker, a character who would check if the ideas were good or bad, was also tossed around. Number 21. The shelf maze that makes up the long-term memory intentionally looks like the exterior of a brain. Even though it was supposed to take place in the mind. Come on, doctor, make up your mind. Or brain. Just, just pick one, okay? Back to number 22. There was going to be a name and face department gag where each department hated each other, so Riley would have an incredible hard time putting names to faces. Number 23. An earlier version of the story featured a Thanksgiving play. That's right. At one point, we had a little play and Riley wanted a particular part in it. I bet you it was the turkey. Number 24. There was going to be a musical cognition department where Riley wouldn't interpret what makes music different from sound. Ultimately, it was taken out because Doctor thought it would be too redundant with the section of abstract thought already implemented. Number 25. The film's composer, Michael Giacchino, also wrote the Triple Mint Gum song. Originally, it was very clever and funny, but not as memorable, so they edited it down to what we see in the film, and we hate him for it, because that song is painful. Number 26. Ever wonder why Joy doesn't send the core memories back up the tube the forgetters used to send up the Triple Mint Gum? jingle? The crew of Inside Out had to address that issue themselves because they were wondering the same thing. Ultimately, they came to the conclusion that Joy couldn't trust the task to anyone but herself, which, you know, sounds a lot like the character of Joy. Number 27. In a scrapped scene, Joy swims beneath the stream of consciousness into the realm of unconsciousness. Ooh, scary. Number 28. The train of thought was originally going to be expanded upon, namely around the joke, losing your train of thought, but ultimately the director chose to go in a different direction. Number 29. In early drafts of the movie, a character called Gloom was going to be the antagonist, basically neutralizing all of the other emotions. Doctor steered away from this because he was worried that it would portray clinical depression as something that could be shaken off. Number 30. Logic was one of the six emotions that got cut. To a degree, they added logic. It would have made Riley seem a bit robotic. What is wrong with robots? We can still love. Number 31. In an earlier iteration of the story, the emotions had a microphone where they suggest things to Riley. This would have definitely made her appear to be more of a robot. They needed the emotions to have a relationship with Riley rather than just simply control her. Number 32. Datcher Keltner, one of the many consultants for the emotions on film, believed believes that love definitely should have been included as an emotion. Number 33. Some of the other imaginary friends that were ultimately cut were Mrs. Scribbles, a crayon drawing, and a corner sun, who always looks like the corner of the sun, even in full frame. Number 34. When Bill Hader was in the writer's room, an idea for a scene was kicked around that featured Joy running through a forest of dental equipment, while animated balloon animals ran after her, then ultimately poop on the tools. Of course, Bill Hader came up with that scene. Number 35. The crew visited the set of Saturday Night Live to do research for the dream production portion of the film. Number 36. Doctor says recording voiceover is usually the most stressful part of the filmmaking process for him, but for Inside Out, he was excited and loved the collaborative process with the actors. Number 37. The crew struggled with making Joy relatable and appealing, and casting Amy Poehler was a big factor in making the character cool. When they told Amy the problems they were having, she said, I think I can help you with that. I can say things that other people can't get away with. Which, if you've seen her in any SNL sketch, you can say is very true. Number 38. Doctor and producer Jonas Rivera also asked Hater if he could use his working history on SNL to get Polar to come in and voice Joy. They said, we don't want her to think we're weird. Uh, Amy Polar, think that you're weird? Not likely, guys. Number 39. Like Hater, Polar also joined the writer's room sometimes, and both were big in influences on their final characters. Number 40. When Polar first heard the script, she said, yeah, I have two small boys, and I literally say, don't be sad. I guess it's as easy as that, huh? Hey, Maggie. 
Don't be sad. She's right, I do feel better. Number 41. Phyllis Smith didn't expect sadness to play a large role as she did. She was surprised when she was the second actor listed behind Amy Poehler. Number 42. Hater describes himself as anxious and says that he would basically have a full-on panic attack before each episode of SNL, which I guess you could say was great practice for his character of fear. Number 43. Hater got the part by stalking the studio. He asked for a tour and told them he was a huge fan. He then met with Dr. and Rivera who cast him. Good choice, guys. Also, sly move, Hater. Is that how you got to be a writer on South Park? Number 44. Hater believes Dr. is a true artist and says that he often describes things as feeling right. Number 45. Hater didn't meet Louis Black, the voice of anger, until the film was already completed. Number 46. Black describes Pixar as a special place where you can truly see the whole creative process laid out in front of you. Number 47. Polar loves the collaborative environment at Pixar and thinks the things they achieved are beyond her wildest dreams. Number 48. Polar also thinks that Inside Out was the best film that Pixar has ever made, but she may be a little biased. Number 49. The voice actor of Bing Bong, Richard Kind, actually cried every time he tried to record the line 49, take her to the moon for me. Okay, and, and now I'm crying because I'm remembering that moment. We had tissues in here. Number 50. The original cut of the film had Bing Bong's final scene as 40 seconds to one minute longer and was much more emotional. Kind likened it to the scene in Bambi when his mother dies. Okay, guys, now I'm crying again. Get it. Number 51. Bing Bong was meant to be a surprise and was kept out of most of the pre-release marketing. Number 52. A large team of animators worked on Inside Out to give expression and personality to the characters. It took around one week to produce three seconds of animation. Woof, that is a lot of work. Number 53. 178,128 storyboard drawings were used to create the film in pre-production. Wow. That's a lot of drawings. Number 54. Doctor was apprehensive at first about beginning the film with Riley as a baby because he felt it was a bit cliche. As a result, he tested seven or eight different openings, but ultimately settled when writer Ronnie Del Carmen pitched the opening that we all saw. Number 55. Look closely at the memory orbs in the background, and you can see some interesting references to other Pixar movies, including the notorious Pizza Planet truck and scenes from Up. Number 56. According to Doctor, there are two more hidden Pizza Planet trucks somewhere in the film. Keep looking, nerds. We'll find them someday. Number 57. The headlines Anger reads in his newspaper, The Mind Reader, are events that actually happened in Riley's day. Number 58. Tri-County, the Northern California area Toy Story takes place in, is the same area the Anderson family moves to in Inside Out. This is shown by the banners in their hockey arena. Number 59. Among the many dream posters from Dream Productions, one in particular will make that conceited xenophile friend laugh and we all have one of those friends. It's I'm falling for a very long time into a pit and is modeled after none other than the classic Saul Bass poster for the Hitchcock film Vertigo. Number 60. If you look closely at Riley's classroom, you can see a poster that references the Pixar shorts La Luna. Number 61. Ted the giant monster from Monsters Inc. makes a cameo appearance as well. Er, well, his legs do. As a prop at Dream Productions. Number 62. Are you wondering why some conceited cinephile friend laughs so hard at the line, forget it Jake, it's Cloud Town. Well, that's because it's an excellent reference to that classic 1974 film, Chinatown. Number 63. Pixar's good luck charm, John Ratzenberger, can be heard towards the end of the film playing Fritz, one of the control panel repairmen in Riley's headquarters. Number 64. The castle that gets smashed in Dream World is modeled after Sleeping Beauty's castle, the same one used for the Disney logo. Maybe they're trying to say Riley's outgrown her princess face? Number 65. When Riley is talking to her friend on a Skype-like messaging system, one of the listed names on her laptop is Doc Pete, in obvious reference to Doctor. Number 66. The same messaging system Riley's using is also used by Trixie, the Triceratops in Toy Story 3. Number 67. When recording the short film Lava, the short before Inside Out, the traditional Hawaiian singers Kuana Torres Kalali and Nupa Greg realized they had actually attended hula school together 
together, making them hula brother and sister, as it is traditionally called. Number 68. In the scene where Riley is at the bus stop getting ready to run away from home, you can see A113 in the background. This is a popular Easter egg referring to classroom A113, where many Pixar employees learned animation. It shows up in other Pixar films, and even non-animated films like The Avengers. Number 69. Riley's house has the address of 21 Royal Street, which also so happens to be the name of Disney's new restaurant. Coincidence? I think not. Number 70. If you missed it, uh, because I sure did, the console tints a certain color based upon the emotion using it. Number 71. In the scene where the dreams shift into nightmares, the music from the Disneyland ride The Haunted Mansion starts playing. Number 72. During Riley's nightmare, we are treated to a cameo by Remy from Ratatouille, uh, as a zombie. Number 73. Jangles the Clown, as revealed by story artists Ronnie Del Carmen and Dome Shi, is directly inspired by Joe Ramp's Buttocks the Clown costume. He was meant as a tribute to the late Pixar legend. Number 74. In Riley's apartment in San Francisco, if you look on one of the tables, you can see a picture of Colette from Ratatouille on the cover of a magazine. Number 75. Riley moving to San Francisco was inspired by Doctor's own childhood, moving to Denmark and the emotions that surrounded that time of his life. But I mean, Denmark has great chocolate, so how sad was he really? Number 76. In one of Riley's memories, you can see Arlo, the protagonist of The Good Dinosaur, but only his tail and back end. Dinosaur butt. Number 77. The Luxo ball from Luxo Jr. makes an appearance as well. Number 78. If you look closely at this scene, you can see the portrait of the purple dragon Figment. Figment is the mascot of the Imagination Pavilion at Disney World's Epcot Theme Center. Number 79. Less than an hour after pitching Inside Out, Doctor and Rivera were planning an Inside Out theme park with Imagineers. Number 80. Sadness turns the emotions that she touches blue. Emotional consultants Ekman and Keltner say that this is a real occurrence in our minds. Research has shown that our current emotions can change the emotions we felt in our memories. And if I try hard enough, I can make my sixth birthday a happy one. I will get that pony. Number 81. They do, however, take issue with sadness being a drag. Studies have shown that sadness is associated with heightened psychological activity. Number 82. Vera says that the crying bing bong doll is their favorite piece of merchandise. Number 83. Inside Out had the highest grossing original non-sequel property opening ever. In a world full of sequels, reboots, prequels, and adaptations, that's darn impressive. Number 84. Inside Out was the second highest grossing Pixar movie of all time. Number one is Toy Story 3, which is understandable. It broke my heart. Number 85. By November 8, 2015, the film had grossed $850,761,711. Worldwide. Number 86. It made more than three times the film's expenditure of $245 million. Guess those extra skin effects were worth it after all. Number 87. Since the movie's premiere, people all over the world are now using the characters as a device to talk to kids about their own emotions and mental illness. Number 88. The crew knew that they had done something special when a Pixar employee told the story of his son who was afraid of diving into a pool but worked up the courage to do it after seeing the movie. Aww. Aww. Number 89. Inside Out has been universally acclaimed by critics, even managing to land an impressive score of 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. Number 90. Inside Out is also one of AFI's top 10 films of 2015. Number 91. Newsday named it the best film of the year. Number 92. It's been nominated for two Oscars, Best Animated Feature and Best Original Screenplay. Number 93. It was also the Golden Globe winner for Best Animated Feature. Number 94. Inside Out was nominated for 14 Annie Awards, animation's version of the Oscars, including Best Animated Feature. Number 95. The film has made the top 10 lists of, uh, wait for it, the National Board of Review, the New York Times, Los Angeles Times, Entertainment Weekly, Film Comment, Rolling Stones, Variety, U.S. Weekly, The Washington Post, IndieWire, IMDb, Southeastern Film Critics Association, The Wall Street Journal, and The Atlantic. Haha, <laughs> it was a kind of a big deal. Number 96. It won Best Animated Feature at the Critics' Choice awards and was nominated for Best Original Screenplay and Best Comedy. Number 97. It was also given the Best Original Screenplay
Screenplay Award by the Washington, D.C. Area Film Critics Association. Number 98. Utah film student Jordan Hanson created a 15-minute edit of Inside Out, removing the inside part of the film. The video went viral early January 2016, and it highlights just how sad Riley's journey truly was. Number 99. In the closing credit scene, the audience sees the headquarters for a bunch of other characters. There was an idea of showing the headquarters for a goldfish, which would have been a console but with no emotions, just blinking lights. I mean, it was just a goldfish. Number 100. With small cultural differences in mind, the team made 28 graphic changes to 45 shots in total. Number 101. Instead of broccoli in Japan, Riley refuses to eat green bell peppers. In some countries, Riley's dad was shown watching soccer instead of hockey. And in countries where they read in the opposite direction, they had to change the animation of Bing Bong when he's spelling out danger. Number 102. Inside Out was released on Blu-ray and DVD on November 3rd, 2015 and included a new short, Riley's First Date. Number 103. In Riley's First Date, Riley is now 12 years old and the boy from the ending sequence comes knocking at her door. Woot woo! I still can't whistle. Number 104. You can collect all the figurines and play as your own favorite motions in the Disney Infinity 3.0 game. Number 105. 103 babies were born to studio staff members during the production of the film. Uh, wow. That's a lot of babies. Number 106. Pixar doesn't think about trends or audiences in development of the film. They just try to make a movie they want to see. Number 107. When asked about the possibility of an inside out sequel, Doctor said, Our philosophy at Pixar has always been, let's find something that's really worth talking about. Then we'll put some thought into it. Well, thanks so much for watching Cartoon Hangover's 107 more facts that you should know about Inside Out. If you like this one, perhaps you'd like some of our other shows. And if there's another movie or TV show that you just need us to cover, let us know in the comments below. Because remember, Frederator loves you. I'm doing this. I'm giving you a voicemail because I just, I, I hope you put me in the video and that's it. Okay.